celebrating today. I am celebrating that our Savior is risen, that He is alive. The Bible calls Him the firstborn from the dead. I don't know about you, but I am grateful and thankful that Jesus conquered it all. Everything, He has conquered it. I'm going to say it again. Everything. He has won the war. Whatever battle you're facing today, Jesus will fight your battles. If you give your battle to the Lord, the Bible says the battle belongs to the Lord. Can I get a loud amen? One more time. Tell your neighbor, say, he is risen. Tell your other neighbor, say, he is alive. All right, you could be seated. Can we give our amazing worship team a big hand as you're seated? What an exciting season. What an exciting day. I am so blessed what God is doing at this church. We just want to welcome you here today on this amazing Resurrection Sunday. How many know Jesus is alive? I might say that just all day over and over and over again because he is alive. Mm. He's been so good. He's been so good to me. He's been so good to this church. I want to just encourage you to get plugged in. It's so important to belong to a local church. It's so important to get plugged in and begin to grow in your faith. We must continue to grow in our faith. Can I get a loud amen? Make sure you check out Wednesday night, 7 p.m. Wednesday is amazing. It is unbelievable. Make sure you get your kids. I mean, we need our kids and youth and young adults plugged into the church more than ever before. Can I get a loud amen? And I know as people are keep coming in, if people need a little room, try to squeeze tight, do what you got to do, help, help people out as they are looking for a seat. But if you have your Bibles, turn to Matthew chapter 28, and we're just going to look at a few verses here. And God has really spoke to my heart and really downloaded something very special into my spirit today. And I have a, a message that I know is from the throne room of heaven. And I'm on assignment today because I believe there's some people that God is going to rearrange where you're going. God's going to alter the direction you've been going. And God's going to do a miracle in your life. How many know he's a miracle working God? Can I get a loud amen? I said something on Friday that kind of the Holy Spirit began to breathe on in my life. And I'm calling this message the narrow way. Tell your neighbor, say the narrow way. Matthew 28, starting at verse 1, says this. Now after the Sabbath, as the first day of the week began to dawn, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat on it. His countenance was like lightning and his clo clothing as white as snow. And the guards shook for fear of him and became like dead men. But the angel answered and said to the women, do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen. I'm gonna say that part again. He is not here. For he is risen. As he said, come see the place where the Lord lay. And go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And indeed, he's going before you into Galilee. There you will see him. Behold, I have told you. So they went out quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy and ran to bring his disciples word. I got a word. I want you to understand today, he is risen. 
he's alive he's not dead but he's alive forevermore and because our faith hope and trust is in him we will be alive with him forevermore can i get a loud amen i'm grateful that when we leave this earth when we pass away we will be in paradise with jesus forever can i get a loud amen if you're excited about that i love the resurrection power of jesus we have so much to celebrate this weekend celebrating his death and his resurrection and i'm here to tell you there's resurrection power in the room today i believe there's some things that were dead in your life that god is breathing on and god is bringing them back maybe there was a dream maybe there was a vision maybe god put something in your heart i believe today as you lay it at the foot of the cross god says to you i'm going to breathe on it and revive it and bring it back to life through the power of jesus christ can i get a loud amen we are alive in him what i love about following jesus is that this isn't a religion i got a relationship see i don't believe in a historical figure i believe in someone that is alive right now today i'm going to say it again i believe he's alive i don't believe in a historical figure or a religion that is dead i believe in a jesus that is alive and still does miracles signs and wonders i don't believe in a dead religion or a dead god but i believe in a god that is alive through the power he's got all power and authority we don't serve a dead religion if you don't know buddha's dead he's never coming back muhammad is dead he ain't ever coming back you could go find their grave sites and you could dig up whatever pull out the tomb whatever it is and their bones will still be there come on somebody but you could go where jesus was placed and i'm here to tell you he's not there because the grave couldn't contain him Acts 2.24 in the Passion Translation says this. I absolutely love this. It is so powerful. Whom God, ra oh, God destroyed the cords of death and raised him up because it was impossible for death's power to hold him prisoner. Let me read it one more time. God destroyed the cords of death and raised him up because it was impossible for death's power to hold him prisoner yeah death couldn't hold him down Whew. he's alive he's alive that makes me want to shout that makes me want to dance we don't believe in something that is dead we believe in something that is alive my religious beliefs aren't through a historical viewpoint it's from a God that's moving and alive right now Whew. he's alive right now he's alive forevermore can we give him a big hand clap what's amazing is first Corinthians 15 says this oh death where is your sting Oh, Hades, where's your victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. As a believer, we are not afraid of death. Death is not something we're scared of because we have a promise. I'm a follower of Jesus and I am promised eternity in heaven. Now, I know you don't hear this much preached anymore, but heaven's real and hell is real. The Bible says there's only two places, heaven or hell. And you have to choose. 
where you're going to spend eternity. And the Bible says that it's appointed once for a man to live. Hebrews actually says this in Hebrews 9, 27. And it is appointed for men to die once, but after this, the judgment. You only promise one life. And there will come a time that you won't be here on planet Earth. There will come a time where you will pass away. There will come a time when someone like me will do your funeral. There will come a time where you will take your last breath. Your heart will stop. And you will spend eternity somewhere. And I know people don't preach this anymore. But I'm here to tell you, this is so important. Because there is two destinations. It's either heaven or hell. And in Mark it says, what if you gain the whole world, but you lose your soul? You can have all sorts of stuff, but what if you lose your soul? And I want you to understand today that there will come a point where you have to say, I'm going to choose heaven, I'm going to choose Jesus, or I'm going to choose hell. Because there's only two options. One day, just like these men are going to roll this out, You'll be in a casket like that. With men bringing to a church like this. And there will be a lot of people that says a lot of nice things. They'll say that you helped do this or you did that. They'll talk about how you treated your family. They'll talk about all sorts of things. But we all end up here. Now you may say, well, I believe I'm going to be reincarnated. I'm going to be a, a caterpillar after this life. Now, I don't know anyone that would want to be a caterpillar, but God bless you if you think that's true. But that's a lie. You will not be a caterpillar. Well, I want to be a butterfly. I don't care. You will not be a butterfly. Tell your neighbor, say, you would look like an ugly butterfly. Tell your neighbor, say, you would be the ugliest butterfly in the world. God wouldn't do that to butterflies. Come on, somebody. God loves butterflies too much. So let me just tell you, you will all end up in a casket like this. Everybody. Not one person on planet Earth will not die. Everyone will die. Everyone. Everyone. When you're young, you think you're invincible. I've been there. Come on, somebody. You think you can survive anything. But there comes a point where you realize that one day this body of flesh, that one day things will just shut off. And like I said, people will say wonderful, nice things about you. They will talk about what you did and they'll make jokes and they'll have fun and there's a celebration and then people go on living. But what happens after this is so important. But what I want to talk about is the road, the road where you choose your destination. Matthew 7 says this, verse 13 and 14. Enter by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And there are many who go in by it, because narrow is the gate, and difficult is the way which leads to life, and there are few who find it. I want to talk about the different roads we travel, and there's only two roads. There's this broad road that the Bible talks about. 
I want to tell you, there's some things that are pleasing to the flesh about this broad road. Let me just preach a little bit where your flesh would get excited about the broad road. The broad road is wide. Let me say it again. It's wide, and the Bible says there's actually a lot of people on this road. And so what's amazing about this road is it's wide, it's broad. You're not alone. There's a lot of people doing whatever they want. Here's the great thing about the broad road. You don't have to aim. Mm. You don't have to be intentional. You can do whatever you want. It's the broad road. You can think whatever you want. You can say whatever you want. You can do whatever you want. You can be whatever you want. You want to be a tree? The broad road's for you. You think today you're this or that? That's the broad road. There's a lot of people on it. Let me tell you some other things. There's churches on the broad road. They won't preach heaven or hell. They'll say everything's all right. You can do whatever you want, live whatever way you want. But there's some so-called churches on the broad road. There's pastors on the broad road. Believe whatever you want. Do whatever you want. I'm never going to challenge you. Don't aim for anything. Don't strive for anything. It is the broad road. The Bible says, though, it leads to a certain place. And before I ever get on a road to drive, you get on a road not because of the conditions of the road, but where the road leads you. And so this road, it's broad. Its conditions can be whatever you want. You can go as fast or slow as you want. There's no stop signs. There's, there's not, it's a broad road. You can live however you want. You want to have your wife and a girlfriend on the side? You can. It's a broad road. You want to identify as an apple tree? It's a broad road. It's the truth. This is the word. It's a broad road. You can believe whatever you want. Now, I know people don't preach like this on Easter Sunday. But I got to preach the truth because there's somebody on the broad road today that God's going to deliver. God told me so clear yesterday, someone's on the broad road that's going to get helicoptered off the broad road. I've been on the broad road. You can do whatever you want. Whatever pleases your flesh, whatever pleases you, this road is all about you. Whatever you want. Whatever you want to be, whatever you want to do, whatever you want to think, this is it. This is it. This is the road for you. But it leads, the Bible says, to destruction. What I've learned about the broad road is this. If you break down on the broad road, there's no triple A and there's no service station. What happens on the broad road when you break down, you just get pushed to the side and the road just keeps going. And so many people are broke down on the side of the road on this broad, wide road. But let me tell you something that the Bible says. There's another road. It's called the narrow road. Now, this road is narrow. The Bible says not too many people are actually traveling this road. That's what the Bible says. It's a small group. It's not a big group that's on this road. Because you just can't think whatever you want. You can't just do whatever you want. It's a narrow road. A lot of people told me Christians have narrow thinking. We probably do because it's a narrow road. We believe the Bible. 
we believe it to be true from Genesis to Revelation. Why do Christians think so narrow? Because it's a narrow road. Truth is narrow. Truth isn't broad. Truth is very narrow. See, we believe Jesus died for our sins. See, on the broad road, there's many ways to heaven. Whatever heaven they say. You can make up heaven as you go along. On the broad road, you can get to heaven through Muhammad or Buddha or whoever. Kentucky Fried, Colonel Sanders from Kentucky Fried Chicken could be your savior. I love me some Kentucky Fried Chicken, but Colonel Sanders is not my savior. See, on the broad road, you can do whatever you want. You can believe whatever you want. You can make up your own heaven. You can make up your own eternity. You can become a grasshopper when you die, a butterfly, a whale, a shark, a lion. You can be whatever. It's a broad road. It's a broad road. Well, I think a little, you know, I want to think different. I want to think, you know, this or that. Well, you can do it on the broad road. But if you want to be on the narrow road, it's not an easy road. It's narrow. There's not a lot of people on it. That's what the Bible says. There's not a lot of people on this road. See, we believe Jesus died for our sins. We also believe he conquered death, hell, and the grave. He resurrected. We believe that death could not hold him. We believe that hell couldn't contain him. And we believe the grave could not trap him. Because he conquered it all. Can I get a loud amen? See, on the narrow road, there's only one way to heaven. That's through Jesus. It's the narrow road. There's only one way to heaven on the narrow road. It's through Jesus Christ. It's through his precious blood. It's through what he did on the cross. He who knew new sin became sin. He lived a sinless, perfect life. See, on the narrow road, there's only one way. Well, I've been to college, and they teach me this and that, and there's so much more complexity to God. Well, let me tell you this. Whatever this Bible says is true, and maybe your college professor ain't true. Maybe he or she is telling you their opinion because there's only one truth, and that's found in this book. Can I get a loud amen? The narrow road, the conditions of the road might not be the best from time to time. There might be highs and lows. There might be valleys and there might be mountains. But on the narrow road, what I've learned is this. And let me tell you a little story about me. Several years ago, probably over a decade ago, I'm the type of guy, and, and don't, don't boo me, but my wife hates this about me. I, ne I wait till the gas tank is on E. I wait for the little the dot to come on, the, the dingy thing. You know the dingy thing. You're, ding, you need gas. Ding. I'm that guy. Come on, somebody. My wife fills up the tank when it's halfway full. Come on, somebody. Not me. I'm the dingy guy. Come on. I wait till it's on E or below E. Ding. 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 Now that it gets in the car, you did not fill up the gas tank. Over probably a decade ago, I was tra traveling a highway with another pastor. And I was in charge of filling up the gas tank. And I filled it up, and we got going, and he said, maybe we should pull over this next stop. We were on a highway where they only had certain exits. I said, nah, let's push it. The dinghy thing hasn't gone off yet. I said, we got plenty of time, trust me. Now, he shouldn't have trusted me because there was many times I was seen grabbing a gas 
a gasoline tank to because I ran out of gas. I was one of those guys. Occasionally, I'd have to go with a gasoline tank to the gas station and get gas. Well, we hit a stretch of road where there was no exit. And I remember we were talking, and all of a sudden, he was driving the car, and he started doing like this. I thought, man, the Holy Spirit's moving in the car. So I began to do like this. I thought it's what we do at the moment. Come on, somebody. I'm a Pentecostal believer, so I thought maybe this is what's happening right now. He goes, what are you doing? I said, I don't know. You're doing it, so I just decided to do it. He says, I'm doing it because there is no gas in the car right now, and I'm trying to get it momentum. I said, oh, no. So I did it some more, and next thing you know, on the middle of a highway, we run out of gas. So I'm sitting there wondering what to do. And next thing you know, I see him jump out of the car and he dives over a divider into the thing. I'm like, why did he just do that? He said, run, there's a tractor trailer coming. So I get out of the car and I dive over this divider into the grass. Luckily, the tractor trailer missed the car. I said, well, what are we gonna do? He says, we need to call AAA. We called AAA. They came and pushed the car to the next exit. It was amazing. We weren't too far from the exit. They pushed it, and then they ended up getting us off the road a little bit, and they put gasoline in the car. We were talking to the AAA person, and he said, whose idea was it to not put gas on this long stretch? I said, that would be my idea. I said, I thought we had enough. He goes, this actually happens quite a bit. There's this long stretch on this highway where people run out of gas because there's no, there's no gas station. And he says, most of the time, I just go back and forth this road because I get called on quite a bit. And I thought about yesterday about that story, and I thought about the narrow road. I have broken down on the narrow road a couple times. But what's amazing about the narrow road is that Jesus says, he'll never leave you nor forsake you. I got some exciting news about the narrow road. Yeah, there's a lot of do's and don'ts. There's signs. There's things you do and there's things you don't do. You're a follower of Jesus. You believe the Bible. There's these, this way we live. We live with conviction. We stand up for righteousness. We follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. We're going to call wrong, wrong, and we're going to call right, right. We don't hide behind what the world hides behind. We preach the unadulterated truth of God's word. We're unashamedly bold about our faith because we know it's the only way to heaven. We don't back down from a fight because God fights our battles. We don't run when times get tough. We fight the good fight of faith. There's something about the narrow road that's just different. It's not the easy road. It's the hard road. You can't just think whatever you want. You can't be a boy one day and a girl the next day. You just can't. It's the narrow road. The Bible says he created male and female. This is the road. This is what Genesis to Revelation said. I know this ain't popular preaching. I know there's other churches on the broad road that will say all sorts of things. But I'm here to tell you, that leads you one way and one way only. And that leads to destruction. But with the narrow road, one thing I've learned is I've been going down that road for a while now. And once in a while, my car breaks down. But what's so amazing about the narrow road is that Jesus, the triple A, he always comes and picks me up. He always comes and helps me. He's never late. He's always on time. He's faithful. I've broken down on the narrow road and God was there. He picked me up when I couldn't pick myself up. On the narrow road, oh, occasionally there was an accident. 
But how many know he was right there? What's amazing about the narrow road is triple A's on the narrow road. Jesus is on the narrow road. There's service stations on the narrow road. There's mechanic shops on the narrow road. He can heal you. Oh, your cars broke down. Let me, let me, let me pull you into the, let, let a mechanic look at it. Let me tell you who the mechanic is. His name is Jesus. He'll get underneath your hood. Come on, somebody. Start putting the wires together. Start fixing this. Start fixing that. And he'll say, you're good as new. Get back on the road. Because I have a destination I'm going to. And this destination is heaven. The Bible says on this road, there is a destination. It's a destination of life. Life, life more abundantly. Life. This is the narrow road. And there's few who find it. Few. I'm grateful I found it. I'm grateful that I called on the name of the Lord. The Bible says, whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. How many are grateful that you called on the name of the Lord? There's resurrection power on the narrow road. There's healing on the narrow road. There's deliverance on the narrow road. There's freedom on the narrow road. There's life and life abundantly on the narrow road. I'm here to tell you, there's something special, there's something amazing, there's something supernatural about this narrow road. And I'm telling you, once you get on it, I know it might not be the best of conditions. It's not wide and broad where you can just do or think whatever you want. I know there's do's and don'ts, and I know there's a lifestyle that is completely different and contrary to the world. But I got to tell you, there's no road like it because I'm less worried about the road I'm on, but where the road takes me. And see, I've got to tell you, a lot of people care about the condition of the road. And I'm here to tell you, it's so it's less about the condition, but more about the destination. I'm here to tell you, I'm on the narrow road, not just because there's triple A and service stations, but I got to tell you, it's leading me somewhere and it's leading me to paradise. It's leading me to heaven. It's leading me to Jesus. I choose the narrow road. I love the narrow road with its hills and valleys. Because when I was a young Christian, I didn't think there'd be any problems. I thought now I'm serving Jesus, there's no problems. Let me tell you, the narrow road has problems. The narrow road has bumps. The narrow road has potholes. The narrow road, you may blow out a tire just traveling down the road. It's not. Sometimes the road isn't best kept up because we're here on planet Earth. We live in a fallen world. But we have hope. Christ in us, the Bible says, is the hope of glory. I'm grateful that my hope is in Jesus Christ. I couldn't live. I was on that broad road, and it only leads one place. And I saw a lot of cars, a lot of people on the side of that broad road. And they would one day die, and the path they were on only led to one place. And that's what's heartbreaking. So few people, the Bible says, choose the narrow road. And I actually understand why. It's so much easier to choose the broad road. The narrow road takes discipline. You got to be intentional. You have to stand for something in a world that stands for nothing. You have to go against the grain. You have to be different. 
Because the one thing that it says, there's a lot of company on the broad road. At times you can feel alone on the narrow road. That you're just doing this all by yourself. But what I love is that isn't true. There's one that sticks closer than a brother. There's a one that will never leave you nor forsake you. The one that just stays so close. I'm traveling on this road with Jesus. My Savior, my King, my Lord, my Prince of Peace, my day spring, my bread of life, my lily of the valley. I'm serving Him. And I would pick the narrow road every time. With the hills and the valleys, with the potholes, with the with the tires that get a hole in them, with occasionally going into the service station, occasionally going to the gas station, I would choose the narrow road over and over and over again. I know, I know that so many would say, why would you choose the do's and the don'ts? Why would you choose to follow a book Why would you choose to follow just this one book? There's so much knowledge out there. There's so much wisdom out there. I chose to follow this book because it's the Word of God. And it's 100% true. I've seen it. I've seen God's timing line up perfect. I've seen His words come alive in my life. I've seen these words leap off the pages like the breath of God, the ruach of God, and come alive in me. I've seen a well spring up in me. I've seen me do things I was not capable of doing in my own strength. But through the power of the Holy Ghost, I was able to do things I was not capable of doing. I I learned things. I grew in things in God. I I knew that I knew that I knew that God handpicked me for such a time as this. That God put his words in my mouth. Not my words, but his words. I realized that on the narrow road, there might be hills and valleys and bumps and, and heartache and pain sometimes. But I would not choose any other road. I don't always just pick the easy thing because it's the easy thing. I pick where I want to go because the destination is important. I choose the destination. And I choose the road that takes me to where I want to go. I choose the narrow road. And as we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who paved this road for us, who made a way, the Bible says, where there seems to be no way. The narrow road. I want everyone to stand right now to your feet. The great thing is if you're on the broad road today, if you call on the name of Jesus, he will come on the broad road and rescue you. And he will put you on this narrow road. I know the broad road's easier. I know you can do whatever you want. I know you can be whatever you want. See, on the narrow road, we choose to say, God, I want to be whatever you want me to be. On the narrow road, we say, God, I want to serve you. On the narrow road, We don't just think whatever we want to think. We meditate on God's word daily. We don't just think 
this or that, we take his word and we meditate on it. Because his word, the Bible says, never returns void. There's only two roads. I know some people would like to be on both of them at the same time. That's not possible. You're either on one or you're on the other. Well, I'm a good person. There's a lot of good people on the broad road. I love my family. I understand. There's a lot of people that love their family on the broad road. There's a lot of people that love their family. There's a lot of people that did love their family that they are in hell right now. There's a lot of good people in hell. The Bible says it's the place where the worm never dies. Gnashing of teeth. The broad road leads to destruction. I must preach this gospel to you today. I must declare the truth of God's word today because we are not promised tomorrow. None of us are promised tomorrow. And if I don't take this opportunity to preach the truth under the anointing of this Resurrection Sunday, because Jesus died for the narrow road so that you could walk on this narrow road so that you could spend eternity in paradise in heaven Jesus rose death hell and the grave could not contain him God God Jesus rose he is risen and he is alive So that the road could be made with his power and his authority because it's all about the destination when you're here it's too late to pick the road it's too late there's no road left to choose there's nothing left once you're in here it's too late that's why today it's important to me and it's important to God that you hear the gospel message that Jesus shed his blood on the cross of Calvary that his blood was shed for your sin because sin entered the room sin entered the world through the garden but God had a redemption plan the whole time. And God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son, Jesus Christ. And whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. God showed me so clearly yesterday that there'd be people here in this church today on the broad road. And Jesus is here. He's with us. And if you call on his name, he will rescue you from the broad road. Because it only leads one place. And with every head bowed, every eye closed. Maybe this is the first time you've been in church for a while. And you were expecting more of a warm, fuzzy Easter Sunday with bunnies and eggs. And the kids are probably doing things like that. I don't really know, but I imagine. But I didn't come here for that. I came here to preach the truth of God's word. I don't care if you like me or not. I don't care how, what you say about me. I chose the narrow road. I know where it leads. And I know there ain't a lot of people on it. 
I know the truth. But I'm telling you, you're broke down on the side of the broad road. And help isn't coming. Unless you call on the name of the Lord. The enemy will leave you to die on the broad road. Broke down, beat up. The enemy will leave you there with no hope, no future. But I'm grateful and thankful that Jesus Christ gives us a hope and a future. I'm grateful that Jesus Christ, who is the same yesterday, today, and forever, does not leave us stranded on the broad road. But if we call on his name, if we say, Jesus, save us, he'll be there and he will take us to that narrow road. He's a savior. He saves us. He delivers us. He makes all things new. He makes a way where there seems to be no way. I just don't want you to get to this point. Because it's too late. So, like I said, with every head bowed, every eye closed, this is between you and God. I'm just the messenger. I'm just the preacher. I preach the truth of God's word with the best of my ability. I'm telling you, there's only one way to heaven, and that's through Jesus Christ. With every head bowed, every eye closed, I'm going to count to three. And when I say three, if, if you need Jesus to save you from the broad road, if you want to get off the broad road today, when I count to three, lift your hand. Maybe you were on the narrow road years ago. But you ended up on the broad road. If you need to rededicate your life today, Jesus will pick you up off that road and put you on the narrow road. Jesus died his blood. He died and shed his blood for us so that we could have life and life abundantly. He was treated cruelly. He lived a sinless life. He was all God, all man. He was the Passover lamb. One, I just declare the Holy Spirit is moving in this place. Convicting hearts. Convicting hearts that are on the broad road. The wide road. I see some of you so stranded on that road. Nobody's helping you. Nobody's stopping. But today is the day. The Bible says today is the day of salvation. Today is the day of salvation. I know you've been hurt. I know you've been betrayed. But there's one that will never leave you nor forsake you. That sticks closer than a brother. Two, I break every lie from the enemy. I break every deceitful lie. I break every desire every lustful desire I break it off right now there's nothing like the narrow road it's all about the destination if you need to give your life to Jesus 
you need to rededicate your life to Jesus, if you need to get off that broad road, when I say three, lift your hand high. This is between you and God. Three, lift your hand high. Lift it up. Lift it up. Lift it up. I see hands going up all over. Lift it up. I see hands everywhere. Lift it up. I don't want to be on the broad road anymore. Lift it up. Lift it up. Lift it up. Lift it up. I want everyone to repeat, repeat this prayer with me. Say, Jesus, forgive me of my sins. I want to get off this broad road. I want to be on your narrow road. Jesus, I'm grateful you died for me. I'm grateful you shed your blood for me. I believe you rose three days later with all power and authority. I surrender my life to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Can we give all those wonderful people a big hand clap? So many people raise their hand to get off that broad road. You need to get plugged into church. It's so important for our faith and our journey on this narrow road. You should get involved with our growth track. It happens every week. It's usually in the lower classroom. But you need to get involved. Come to church weekly. It's important that you sharpen your faith. Make sure you're here on Wednesday. Grow in the things of God. Because the narrow road is not the easy road. But it's the road that leads to where I want to go. Every hand lifted. Every hand lifted. I want to bless you and your family. And as the worship team comes back. I pray a special blessing on this resurrection Sunday I pray that the resurrection power of God flows through your life I pray for miracles signs and wonders to follow you all the days of your life I pray that now you're on this narrow road the power of Jesus is on this narrow road I pray for a special touch from heaven I pray for strength and endurance. Come on, lift your hands up high. I pray for victory that comes through Jesus Christ. I pray that your family and your lineage be a lineage that serves God. I pray for favor, the favor of God all over your life. I pray for blessing and favor on this Resurrection Sunday. In Jesus' name, everyone say amen. Come on, let's give Jesus a shout of praise. Now, how many here today are glad he is alive and he is risen? Come on, one more time. Who is glad he is alive and he is risen? I'm glad he made that narrow road for me. I'm glad he made that narrow road. Pastor Rob's going to come up in a minute. One of the things we do every resurrection weekend, we do it on Good Friday and we do it on Resurrection Sunday, is we take up our resurrection mission seat. And it's to make a difference around the world, and especially in El Salvador. In a little over a week, we will be traveling to El Salvador with about 40 some people from this church to preach the gospel We're gonna bring food and relief to tens of thousands of people. We're gonna preach, we have a stadium, and it's packed for two nights already. I think they might have a picture of the stadium. But we're gonna have a crusade there, and it's already packed out for two nights. So it's already full for two nights.
We're also doing our first kids crusade. We're going to a village and there's going to be a couple thousand kids that are going to hear the good news of Jesus Christ. We're going to bring food and relief to those children as well. This cost, this costs a lot of money to do. And we sow this seed every year to reach souls so that people can get on the narrow road. And it's so important. And it's blessed so many people over the years. It's blessed me and my wife. And every time you give to God, you're blessed. You can't outgive God. Every time I've given to God, I've been blessed. So many testimonies of people that have given during this resurrection mission seed. And what we say is this. God gave his best in this season. So we're going to give our best. God gave his best. And we're going to give our best. And it's one of the times in the Bible that the Bible says three times a year during the feast seasons, don't come empty handed. And this is one of those seasons we don't come empty handed. And this is such a powerful time. God gave his best, his only son, Jesus Christ. So as we get ready to give today, we're going to give our best. Can I get a loud amen? Before Pastor Rob comes up, Pastor Rob, why don't you come up now? I want to take a moment and pray for Santa Ana El Salvador and our crusade. Would you stretch your hands to your left, my right? And we're just going to pray. Lord, in a little over a week, there's going to be a team traveling from this church to El Salvador. I pray that you begin to speak to people's hearts. Holy Spirit, go before us and begin to convict hearts right now. Begin to prepare the way. Begin to move supernaturally. Begin to just do what only you can do. We pray for miracles, signs, and wonders. Lord, last time we were there, we saw blind eyes open. We saw deaf ears open. We saw the lame walk. We saw the mute speak. God, we pray for miracles, signs, and wonders. But we pray for the greatest miracle of all, the miracle of salvation. We pray that tens of thousands of people choose the narrow road. Choose the narrow road. God, we pray right now that the food and everything that we're providing for the people there go smoothly, run smoothly, God. All the team that's already there on the ground in El Salvador, we put a wall of fire. We declare a wall of fire and a hedge protection on them. And Jesus, give us souls lest we die. We pray for souls. And I pray this offering today is exceedingly abundantly above to reach souls for the kingdom of God. And everyone say amen. 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 Come on, let's give Jesus one more hand clap. Give him one more shout of praise. Come on, ushers, make your way down very quickly. Maybe you came here today already prepared to give your resurrection mission seat offering. or Maybe as Pastor was talking about it, you were just thinking, I want to give today, but I didn't come prepared. You can always give online, and we call it resurrection mission seed because that word resurrection means that something will come to life something that's buried and every seed has to get buried before it can produce fruit so we call it resurrection missions seed offering and i know what god has done in my family's life i know what god has done in some of your lives new businesses that were opened up because you sowed last resurrection mission seed and and i've heard from so many so many people i'm excited to give this time Not because of what God is going to bless us with, but because what will happen when we are obedient to sow. And we're believing for creative miracles in Santa Ana, El Salvador. Limbs to grow back, minds to come back, eyes to be created right in front of us. Dead coming back to life. Prodigals coming home. Children getting set on that narrow path when they could have been lost on the wide road. They'll be set back on that narrow road. Come on, somebody. You're not sowing into another project. You're sowing into souls and lives. Because we're not just concerned about the lost. We're burdened for the lost. There's something different when somebody says, I'm concerned about something. Than when somebody says, I'm burdened about it. You know what happens when you are burdened for something? You get on an airplane. 
and you fly thousands of miles into dangerous places and dark places to see people that could have never heard the gospel message in one moment when 25,000 people will pack out a stadium and the man of God will step out and a gospel message will be preached. This is not just a simple offering. This is an offering that we have presented to God to put it to the ground so that souls could be saved. It's not just about LA here at this church. We have been mandated to see LA saved and the world reached for Jesus. So as you prepare to give your resurrection mission seat, also preparing to give your tithe, I had this scripture verse laid on my heart. And when pastor preached on 1 Corinthians chapter 15, I thought, oh no, he's gonna use the one that the spirit gave me. But he stopped in 57 and God gave me verse 58. So when it says, oh, death, where is your sting? Oh, grave, where is your victory? Paul continues in the very final verse, says, therefore, meaning if you already know that death has lost its sting, come on, somebody. You already know that death has lost its sting and that grave has no victory over you. Therefore, my beloved brothers, everybody, be steadfast. You know that death doesn't have a sting. You know the grave doesn't have a victory. So nothing in this world should move you. Be steadfast, immovable, and always. That's what I wanted to bring out today. Always. There's never a season we don't sow. There's never a season we don't go. Always. Abounding. That means we don't do the bare minimum at this church. We abound in the work of the Lord. So we give our tithe and we sow in resurrection mission seed. We go to the streets of LA and we go to the streets of Santa Ana, El Salvador. Come on, somebody. Have you felt this is resurrection Sunday? Always abounding in the work of the Lord. Listen, it's his work that he's called us to. It's not my work, it's God's work. That's why it's blessed when you sow, because it's his work. Always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that's faith. Always abounding in the work, knowing I have faith that death has lost its sting and grave has no victory. Knowing that in the Lord, your labor is not in vain. See, as we get ready to sow in the work of the Lord, but it's my labor. It's his work, it's our labor. So we have to sow and we have to go, it's our labor. We have to put feet to our faith. We have to put faith to our prayers because there's a mama in El Salvador right now waiting for our team to get there. She doesn't know it yet, but the man of God's about to hit the ground and victory is about to be won for her life and her family. So we've got to go. We've got to go. But whatever you sow and wherever you go in the name of the Lord, let it not be in vain when you do so unto him. He'll bless you for it. He'll bless you for it. So if you have your gift today, if you're going to sow your resurrection mission seed, would you grab it now and begin to intercede on behalf of every soul that will pack out that 25,000 seat arena, not just one day, but for two nights, two days, 25,000 people and the kids crusade. Takes a lot to do what God's going to do, but aren't you grateful he's going to use us to do it? Come on, today we make a statement, God don't pass us by, but use us. Would you grab that seed? Would you grab your tithe right now and lift it up to God and say, God, I give this freely unto you. No strings attached. Do with it what only you can do. God, breathe on this seed. Bring fruit from this seed. God, may we see creative miracles. May we see families be brought back together. May we see the hungry fed and the poor made rich. My God, would you do it one more time again? Because we sow in faith knowing that our work, our labor shall not be in vain. It's in your mighty name. And I know there's a church in this place tonight, today with the Pentecostal church. Say amen. amen. Come on, would you shout amen? amen. Come on, ushers, would you receive the tithe now? Would you receive the offering? I don't know about you, but there's just something about Resurrection Weekend that just gets me. All, all excited. It's one of the greatest times of year. And, and as Pastor gave that gospel message, as he gave the altar call for those that needed to rededicate their lives or give their lives to Jesus for the very first time, there's the there's a next step that I would love to challenge you for. It's called water baptisms. 
It's the, great, the, ne- the second greatest thing that you can do in your walk with Jesus. First, give your heart to him. Next, be baptized in water. And what this is, is a public declaration of the internal transformation that has happened in your life. What you're saying is, I no longer am going to walk in the shame of the gospel of Jesus Christ because I am not ashamed. I'm going to be bold for him and I want everybody to know that I belong to Jesus. And so if you've not been baptized, if you gave your life to Jesus here this morning for the first time or rededicated it to him and you need to get water baptized, would you go to cr.city slash events? You can pull your phone out right now and sign up. Would you encourage somebody that you know that hasn't been baptized? Maybe they need to get baptized. They can get baptized here. Trust me, it's going to be a a Holy Ghost celebration next Sunday at 11 a.m. when we see so many people make that public declaration. And so we're only going to have that baptism at our 11 a.m. service. So get signed up. It's going to be an amazing Sunday. Can I get an amen? What a great resurrection Sunday so far. And I know the worship team is up here, but maybe today you went stirred to something or you're walking through something and you want to feel that resurrection power and you want to, you want to know it for yourself. Well, we're going to open up these altars right now and we'll have pastors here. We would love to pray with you. We would love to pray for you. If you gave your heart to Jesus for the very first time, I'd love to talk to you. Pastor Bill would love to talk to you. Any of our pastors would love to talk to you. So why don't you come down to and we'll, we'll pray with you and stand with you. But God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Happy Resurrection Sunday, y'all. If you need prayer for anything, we love you. We'll be here to pray with you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you.